Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Sanj Kakar. And I'm Tracy McRae. The, humu- the human immune system is a powerful tool. In response to bacteria and viruses, the immune system cells create a molecule called an antibody to fight the disease. Research on antibodies at Mayo Clinic is helping identify differences among autoimmune neurological diseases, which can lead to better, faster treatment for patients. Sounds good. Recently, Mayo Clinic launched a first-in-the-U.S. clinical test to help patients get the right diagnosis faster when it comes to, z- to diseases like multiple sclerosis. Here to discuss is Mayo Clinic immunologist Dr. Vanda Lennon. Dr. Lennon is the Dorothy A. Adair Professor of Immunology and Neurology and is the founder of Mayo Clinic's Neuroimmunology Laboratory, which started back in 1981. Welcome to the program, Dr. Lennon. It's very nice to meet you. Very nice to be here. So tell us about the lab. 1981 seems like a long time ago. <laughs> Did it seem depends, like yesterday? <laughs> depends on whose perspective it is. It's gone re- remarkably quickly. How did, you get, how did you get started in immunology? I, was fa- I started out as a medical student in Australia, and I was fascinated by immunology. And Australia was the epicenter of immunology at that time. Got a Nobel Prize in 1960 in Australia. And... When I graduated, I went to Canada to do residency in internal medicine, and after two years, I thought I'd like to go back to Australia to do one year of immunology and then return to Canada. Well, it turned out I stayed three and a half years in Australia, did a PhD in immunology, and then went to Salk Institute in San Diego to study neuroscience to complement the immunology that I had because I was already in Melbourne working on um, at the Walter and Eliza Hall Institute on an autoimmune uh, experimental autoimmune neurological disease which was thought to be a model for multiple sclerosis and I convinced myself that it had nothing to do with multiple sclerosis. And does it? No. <laughs> it is not. I will come to that later. <laughs> so what exactly are autoimmune neurological diseases? Uh, the one that we first put on the map um, in, in terms of having an antibody that caused the disease mm-hmm. was myasthenia gravis, which is a neuromuscular disease. Okay. And it's, if you've got to have a neurological disease, that's a good one because it, it, lots can be done to help those patients, um, like washing out the antibodies and then giving them medication to suppress the production of the antibodies. And what exactly is myasthenia gravis? Um, It's caused by antibodies blocking the muscle side of the neuromuscular junction, so it stops the muscle getting the message from the nerve to contract. So they're Mm -hmm. they're neurological disorders, but are there any of that are related to cancer? Uh, Well, most of the autoimmune diseases that we recognize as truly autoimmune neurological diseases are associated with cancer to varying extents. For example, 15% of adult patients with myasthenia gravis will have uh, cancer. Usually it's a tumor of the thymus gland. Mm. Um, And then uh, there's another neuromuscular disease at the neuromuscular junction that uh, we also put on the map in terms of the antibody, and that's an antibody that blocks the nerve from releasing the message to the to the um, muscle. And that disease, eighty percent of them have um, in the way back in the 19, early nineteen eighties, eighty percent of them were thought to have cancer. But once we developed the test to detect the antibody that was causing it, we found that patients um, th- that didn't have cancer can also have that disease, including children. So, but there is what we have found, because that's one of the diseases, it was actually first described here at Mayo Clinic back in the late 40s, um, the Lambert-Eaton myasthenic syndrome. Mm-hmm. That was going to lead uh, me on to the next question about risk factors for these autoimmune yeah, well, neurological diseases. Are they genetic in nature, environmental in nature? Well, if we get back to the lambert eaton syndrome, it's highly associated with smoking. Okay. And so uh, for the cases that are related to cancer, and it was first recognized with cancer uh, for two reasons. Back in the 40s, most of the smokers were men, and you have to smoke for about 20 years to be at risk for it. And if women complained of the symptoms and they were not smokers, they were not taken seriously as 
having a neurological disease because everyone knows women tend to be hysterical about yeah, symptoms. Yeah, always. <laughs> uh, but then with the antibody test, we were able to recognize more and more women and children with that disorder. Yeah, that's wrong. How does, if you know the exact antibodies, how can that help improve the patient uh, treatment or the treatment that patients receive? Uh, if you know the exact antibodies, you know what you were dealing with, and multiple sclerosis would be a good example of that. You, you ask people, right. name an autoimmune neurological disease, and they'll say multiple sclerosis. It's immune-mediated. There's no question about that. No one has a clue what the target of the immune response is. There is no diagnostic marker specific for multiple sclerosis, none whatsoever. No genetic marker, no antibody marker, no imaging marker. There's a constellation of symptom signs and imaging and spinal fluid findings, but there's not, a, there's not any evidence that it is autoimmune. It could be immunity against an organism that we don't, a microbe that hasn't been discovered yet or hasn't been recognized in that context. So we think of antibodies as something that's beneficial to us, that protects our immune system. So what happens for it to attack our own body? Good question. <laughs> These antibodies aren't found in healthy people, Okay. Um, the neurological antibodies. And um, it's what we have found, getting back to the Lambert-Eaton syndrome and its smoking association, it is lung cancer that it's highly associated with, the most deadly form of lung cancer, small cell lung cancer. And that cancer is getting less and less frequent now that the smoking patterns are going mm. down in this country. But we have shown in our basic research that the lung cancers contain those very same calcium channels that the antibodies are recognizing at the nerve terminal so um, the and in other um, cancer associated neurological diseases the the target of the uh, immune response is not on the cell surface necessarily but it's a piece of mm -hmm. a nuclear protein or a side of a, 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 inside of the cell, because it's derived from inside of the cell, and it's being displayed on an immune marker on the surface of the nerve or the muscle, and it's the cytotoxic or killer T lymphocytes that are the um, fighter bombers of the immune system come in and kill the, the neur neuronal cells. What's on the horizon in for the research that you're doing? What are you... What's happening tomorrow? What's happening next week and next month and next year? Uh, earlier diagnosis, more appropriate diagnosis. Um, authentic animal models. There have been mm -hmm. animal models for multiple sclerosis for oh, fifth, almost 100 years. Um, but they just because the animals are weak and paralyzed, it doesn't mean they've got multiple sclerosis. Sure. So just because their brain damage looks similar so I think we can have much more appropriate models once we understand the diseases there's not yet a really authenticated model of multiple sclerosis. We've been talking about and autoimmune neurological disease research with Dr. Vanda Lennon from Mayo Clinic's Neuroimmunology Laboratory. Thanks for joining us Dr. Lennon. Thank you Sanjay and Tracy.